Welcome to this Children in Northern Ireland professional briefing. My name is Kieran Trainer, and this is one of a series of briefings from Children in Northern Ireland. The purpose of these briefings is to inform practice in the voluntary and community child care sector within Northern Ireland. The title of this briefing is What is a Unicini? Some of you may be very familiar with the name Unicini, so let's start with the name or the acronym. We're very good at coming up with acronyms in Northern Ireland. Unicini is not a type of pasta, despite sounding as such. Unicini stands for understanding the needs of children in Northern Ireland. So if we break that title down, we get the acronym Unicini. Unicini was developed to improve the quality of assessment across organisations involved with children and young people and families. It was developed to assist in communicating the needs of children across organisations and agencies. And when we consider that the law says that the welfare of a child is paramount, it's really important that we're able to communicate the needs of children across all of those organisations who work with children. The law also says we need to be working in partnership, so all of those organisations need to be in a position to communicate about children in a way that they understand. It was also developed to avoid escalation by early identification of needs and, and to get effective intervention. So basically, intervening earlier before things get worse. So what is this Unicini? It stands for Understanding the Needs of Children in Northern Ireland. It is unique to Northern Ireland. It was developed specifically for Northern Ireland. It is an assessment framework, and we'll talk about assessment in a moment or two, but basically it is a decision-making framework. It helps us make decisions about children. We put information into this framework, and it helps us make decisions. It's a common tool, and by that I mean it's a tool that all organisations working with families and children in Northern Ireland should be able to contribute to and use, and it's a communication tool. We know when organisations do not communicate effectively about children and about families, and it increases the potential risk to those families. If I have a piece of information concerning a child that worries me, and I don't communicate that to an organisation that can do something about it, then the risk to that child can increase. So it's a communications tool. tool. It's a way of, of improving communication. It also is a way of enabling collaborative decision making. So all of those organisations who work with children and families have a part to play in children and families' lives. And if we collaborate, then children are less likely to be placed at risk. And it focuses on needs, strengths, risks and protective factors in a child's life. If we just focus on needs and risks, we can get a very negative view of what's going on in a child's life. The Unitini should also consider those strengths and protective factors that are around in a child's life. So when we talk about assessment, what we're talking about is a process of gathering, discussing, and analyzing information from a range of sources that might help us get an understanding of a situation and help us make decisions and possibly develop plans for actions. So an assessment really is gathering information, thinking about that information, prioritizing it, weighting it, discussing it, analyzing it, talking to other people about it. And from that information, get an idea of what are the needs, the risks, the strengths, the protective factors within a child's life or within a family's life. And to use that information to help us decide what is the best course of action. That's basically what assessment is. We do it every day. Every time you cross the road, you do an assessment. When you stop at the curbside and you look left and right, you're gathering information. You then analyze that information and you make some decisions about how you're going to cross the road. And when you cross the road, you're putting your plan and your decisions into action. Unicini helps us do the same thing with the children and young people we work with. Unicini is a mechanism for stopping looking, listening, gathering information, and with that information in collaboration with other organizations, make some decisions about the best course of action. If we imagine a child's life like a jigsaw puzzle, everybody will have some pieces of that puzzle, but not everybody will have all of the pieces. Social services may have pieces, the family may have pieces, the faith group may have pieces, the scout leader may have pieces, people in the local community may have pieces, the siblings may have pieces, teacher may have pieces. And by putting all those pieces together, we build a picture of what's going on in this child's life. 
And it's only really by collaborating and sharing those pieces of the puzzle that we can get a clear picture of the needs, risks, strengths, protective factors in a child's life. So Unitini is a way of pulling all of those pieces together. It's a way that we can use to share pieces and bring pieces together to get a picture of what's going on in a child's life. In the past and before Unicini, people did share pieces of the puzzle, but often they were sharing them in a way that was difficult for other organizations to use. The fact that Unicini is a common tool means that we are sharing pieces of the puzzle in a way and in a format that other organizations can use. So in theory, it should speed up decision making and make for much more consistent and inclusive decision making. So Unicini is the process of making decisions, the process of assessment, but it also provides us with the tools for doing that, the tools for sharing information. When can we use Unicini? Well, we can use Unicini when we've got concerns about the health, welfare, behavior or progress of a child. If I have concerns about the child I'm working with, from something I've seen or heard or witnessed or been told. And I want to know what to do with that concern. In effect, I have pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, pieces of the picture of this child's life that worry me. Unitini is a way that I can share those concerns or share those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle with other organizations who can help me with this child's needs. I can also use Unitini when I've got concerns about a parent or carer's capacity to meet the child's needs. So at this point in time, the parent's capacity to meet the child's needs, to keep the child clean, to keep the child fed, to to supervise the child, to get the child to school, those concerns uh, are on my mind. I can use Unicini to get some help for that family and that child. I can use Unicini to make a referral to a specialist agency, for example, social services. So in the voluntary and community sector, for example, we do not have a role in investigating We work very closely with families and with children. We provide a great range of services and high quality services. But there are times we may need the help of other organizations to resolve or meet the needs within a family. And seeking the help of those other organizations, we call making a referral. And the Unitini system can be used to make that referral. In effect, I'm taking the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle I have and I'm sharing them with social services using Unicini in the hope that they will be able to help me and help the family. I can use Unicini when the needs and risks are broader than my service can provide. So I may provide a particular range of services with this family or with this child, and Unicini is a way of getting additional services that are things that I cannot provide myself. I can use Unicini when the needs of the child are unclear. Maybe I need someone who has specialist skills and knowledge to assess the needs of this child. Maybe a mental health professional or substance, someone who has, who has expertise in substance use. Unicini can bring in that additional expertise to help the family or the child. I can use Unicini to help me identify and clarify a child's needs. So the process of gathering information and analyzing that information through using Unicini maybe in collaboration and partnership with others, can help me identify and clarify the needs that a child has. And maybe to engage other services. So I'm working with a family, I'm working with a child, and I think the needs of this child or the needs of this family go beyond what I can provide. I can use Unicini through social services, maybe to bring other services and resources into this family. And Unicini also assists us in recording. Good record keeping is really important in good child protection. If it's not recorded, It hasn't happened. And Unicini provides us with a mechanism for keeping good records. Two key questions regarding Unicini. Is this a child who needs help or is this a child who needs protected? The Unicini tool we're going to talk about, the referral form, can be used for both of those. This is a child who has needs. This is a child who needs assistance. This is a family that needs support. Or this is a child protection issue. Either way, Unicini can be used to share our information with social services to get help for this child who has needs or this child who needs protected. So let's think for a minute, what is a child in need? If we start by thinking about what we would expect for a child or a young person in our society, we would expect them not to be homeless. We would expect them to have sufficient food. We would expect them to go to school. We would expect them to have the right clothes for the season. We would expect them to have sufficient levels of hygiene. So if a child is above that line in terms of what we would expect, they are better than 
uh, than our than basic needs. If a child is below that line, then their basic needs are not being met. So a child in need is a child who is below that line, where their basic needs are not being met. They may need protection. So all children who need protection are considered children in need. But not all children in need need protection. Some children in need may need additional help to get over an issue, but they don't need protection. But all children who are experiencing abuse are considered to be children in need. A child in need may be a child who is experiencing poverty or in a family experiencing poverty, which means their basic needs are not being met. Or they could be a child who's failing in school, not attending school, or where there are particular issues in school that mean they're not developing their full potential. They may be a child in need. A child with learning difficulties could be considered a child in need. They need additional help so that they can take advantage of the opportunities that a child without learning difficulties. A child who is offending or a child who is experiencing offences may be considered a child in need. Maybe a child where there is a low or insufficient level of parental supervision so they're getting into trouble or engaging in antisocial behaviour, that be, could be considered a child in need. Or maybe it's a child who has behavioural difficulties. Maybe to do with neurobiology or diet or supervision, this child is struggling to behave in a way that we would find acceptable and that's affecting maybe their performance in school. And that could be considered a child in need. Or there are physical or mental health concerns about this child. Or this family or child has difficulty in accessing services and because of that they are a child in need. Maybe this child needs medical services they're not getting. Because of that, they could be considered a child in need. Or maybe the child is using substances that are detrimental to their welfare or their behaviour. Or maybe this child is a parent themselves. They may be considered a child in need. They need help to fulfil their role as parent and they need help to develop as a child. Or maybe this child is a carer. Maybe this child is caring for a parent with mental health issues or a parent with physical health issues. So the child who is caring may need help to have their basic needs met. Unaccompanied and asylum-seeking children are also considered to be children in need. And there may be children in need whose parents or carers are unable to meet the children's needs. So the parent may be experiencing physical or mental health issues or maybe using substances or maybe in a position where they're unable to meet their child's needs. Under those circumstances, this child could be considered a child in need. Children who are facing homelessness or children who are in families facing homelessness can be considered to be children in need. And a child exposed to domestic abuse, the emotional and psychological uh, detrimental effects on a child could mean that that child is considered a child in need. And all children with disabilities under the law are considered children in need. They may need additional help, support, infrastructure to take advantage of the opportunities presented to other children. And this is not an exhaustive list. You may think of other things that you would consider would place this child as a child in need. You can find more information on need and thresholds of need in Northern Ireland on this website. Unicini very much is based upon what we call an ecological or a systems approach. So basically, if we take a child, there are lots of things that influence this child's life and lots of things that this child will influence through their life. So on the screen here, we have a picture of a woodland. We have trees, we have bluebells, uh, we have grassland. All of the features in this picture, all of the features in this woodland are all interdependent. If we remove the trees, too much light gets through and the bluebells will not blossom because the ground will be too dry. If we remove the bluebells, the moisture will escape from the ground and the trees will be deprived of moisture and may die. All of the bits of this system are all interlinked. And just like a child's life is interlinked with the welfare of their parents, the capacity of their parents, the environment they live in, just so the features of this woodland are all interlinked. You change one part of the system, it impacts or can impact on other parts of the system. So Unicini is structured around this idea of lots of things that are interlinked, that are influential in a child's life and which a child can also influence. And we call those things the domains, the parts of the system. So the three general areas or domains are, for example, the child's needs. 
things to do with the child that we need to consider as part of our assessment or decision making regarding a child. We also need to consider another domain, the parent or the carer's capacity to meet the needs of the child. So sometimes if we have a child that has really extreme needs, it may impact on the parent's capacity. Or if there are other things impacting on the parent's capacity, for example, parental mental ill health or poverty, that can impact on their ability to meet the child's needs. So those elements of those domains are interdependent. We have another domain there, which are things that we would call the family and environmental factors. If you have a little bit of more detail in there, under the child's needs, we consider things like the health and development. So we may have some reasons why there is a concern about things that are going on in those domains. It could be something to do with the child. I have concerns that this child is not meeting their developmental milestones. I have a concern that this child is unable to perform in school. I have a concern about this child's behavior or ability or nourishment. So there are things to do with the child. There may also be things to do with the parent or carer. I have concerns about the parent or the carer, or I am reassured that the parent or carer is able to meet the child's needs. And there may be things to do with the family and environment. So if I'm looking at the child or the family I'm working with, there may be things to do with the child, the parent or carer, the family or environment that reassure me or that may cause me concern or some combination of all three of those domains. I may have a concern because of a suspicion or allegation about the child, the parent or things in the environment. My concern may come from a disclosure. A parent discloses to me concerns they have about the child or someone in their extended network, or they may disclose about things to do with their own capacity. I may also have concerns about whether the child's needs are being met by the parents, or whether there are risks to the child caused by the environment or the parents. I may have concerns because of something that has happened, is happening, or could happen. Maybe I've got concerns about something that was a one-off, or maybe I've got concerns about a pattern of behaviour. Maybe I've got concerns about something that was done or not done. So is this a parent who is doing something that is causing risk to the child or not doing something that is causing risk to the child? For example, maybe this child has additional health needs and the parent is not providing the medication that the child needs. That may cause me concern. And that would be a combination of the child's domain and the parent and carer domain. And maybe I have concerns about the degree of some of a behavior, the extent. You know, so a child is maybe hungry for an extensive period of time. Or I may have concerns about the duration of behavior persists. So a child is not going to school for long periods of time. Or how often something happens, frequency. So If I'm thinking about sharing information with social services, sharing the pieces of the jigsaw I have using my Unicini system, I may be thinking to myself, am I using Unicini to share information to do with the child, the parent, the family and environment, or some combination of those? And are my concerns to do with an allegation or a suspicion, something I've been told? Are they to do with need or risk? Is it something that has happened, is happening, or could happen? Is it a one-off or a pattern? An act of commission, something done, or something not done that should have been done? And how often does this happen? How long does it go on for? Those things are questions that we should consider when we're thinking about using Unicini. And there may be others that you think about. Some other things to think about would be where our information comes from. So if we've got a picture like this, a young man looks like he's playing a computer game. There are some bottles on the table, some takeaway food. How would you know what's going on here? Looking at that picture, think to yourself, how do I know what's going on? But primarily we're using our eyes. So Unicini may be based on things we see. If you walked into that room, you might use other senses. You might use your sense of smell. And depending on how long that food has been sitting on the table, there might be quite an aroma. I might also use my ears if I walk into that room because I might ask the the lad some questions and he may give me some answers. So a combination of what I see, what I hear from what I'm told, what I smell may reassure me that everything's okay 
or may cause me some concerns. And those concerns could be to do with the child, the family or the environment, or the parenting capacity, or some combination of those. So Unicini may have what you saw or observed or witnessed, things to do with your eyes. I saw it. I witnessed it. I observed it. Or it could have things to do with what you heard or what you were told. You're using your ears. I heard this. I was told this. I overheard this. May also to do with things you've read. Again, we're using our eyes here. And if we keep good records, we may read our records and realize there are patterns of behavior here that cause us concern. Or maybe I come into work and I read what one of my colleagues wrote the previous evening or the previous day and I go, that's worrisome. So it may be to do with things I've read. It may be to do with things I've smelt. Deteriorations in hygiene, and the smell of some drugs. So my smelling, my sense of smell could, could highlight some concerns for me. Or maybe what I've touched. You know, the child's clothes are damp and that causes me concern. We may also think about concerns coming from how we feel, our intuition, our gut feelings. And to be honest, if, if I'm filling in a unitini, I am more likely to be inclined to put faith in what I have seen, heard, read, smelt, or touched. I'm less likely to, be, to be put my faith in my, my feelings. And certainly if I shared information through unitini with social services, they're not going to take my intuition or my gut feelings too seriously. What I would say would be if you have an intuition or a gut feeling, it may come from something that is of concern. So it's useful to ask the question, where does my intuition come from? So to recap, if I am putting information into the Unicini process, it will be things to do with the child, the parent, the family or environment, or some combination of those. It may be things that I have seen, heard, smelt, read, touched. It may be things to do with disclosures or allegations. It may be things to do with things that are done or not done, things that have gone on for a long time or things that are repeated. So my information will have a source. My information will have quality. My information will be as factual as possible as I enter into the process of sharing information with social services. Natini may be used as part of our basic child protection process. So if I have a concern and I will share my concern about this child's needs or the child's risks with my designated officer, my designated officer will ask where my information is coming from. So I'll be able to say it's to do with the child and it's to do with something I've seen. Or my concern comes from parenting capacity and it's to do with something I've read. Or my concern comes from a disclosure about things going on in the wider family that are affecting the child's welfare. So by the time I come to talk to my designated officer, I'll be able to share with my designated officer the origins of my concern and why I have a concern. My designated officer may realize that my concern has, has credence and may consult with social services or the police about my concern. And at the end point of that consultation, I may be asked to put in a formal referral to social services. And this is where the Unitini referral form will, will be used. So the Unicini referral form over the years has become a relatively streamlined document. The first page covers the child or young person's details, names, addresses, dates of birth. It's important to say if you're filling in a Unicini form that you should only put in the information that you have available. Remember in the voluntary and community sector, we don't have a role in investigation. So we're supplying the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, the information we have available to social services using the Unicini referral form. So we're sharing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle in a format that social services will find easier to use. The alternative is if a child has contact with three or four different organizations, they'll all be sharing information in different formats, which can slow down or make the decision-making process or the assessment process more complex. So that first page is general information. And that general information is important because it can unlock other bits of information that social services has. So by providing the information about name and date of birth, that allows a social worker to check their records and find if they have other pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that are relevant to this family or this child. Be aware that names and addresses can change 
and they can be quite fluid in how they change. Families living precarious lives may move addresses relatively quickly, or indeed people change their names a lot more quickly than they used to. Carry spelt with a Y could become carry with an I because of a decision someone made uh, very quickly. So if you know that a child or a family have multiple names, then please share those in that first page of the Unicini form. The second page is information about you. The referrer's name, your title, your address and postcode. That's important because social services may want to come back to you. And then section 2B there is the reason for referral. And that's what we've been building up to here. So all of that stuff about, is it to do with the child? Is it the dis disclosure? Is it an allegation? Is it something you've seen, something you've heard? That goes into this section. The reason for a referral is, this is a concern I have about this child's needs not being met, or this is a child protection referral. And it's to do with something I've seen or something I've heard. It's to do with this length of time. It's to do with the child. All of that, all of those questions and information we've been thinking about to date go into that section. And it's important that we write to the point. Section 2C there, is there a requirement for immediate action? So you're giving social services an idea about the urgency of this situation. In the third part of the Unicini form, we're asked to share information about who we know who are part of this child's network. People we may know who are in this child's household or in their wider network, significant others involved in this child's life. So who is part of this child's system? And it's important to, to remember that not all of these people are people who may present a risk to the child. Some of the people we, we may be sharing in this part of the document may be people who provide resources or resilience to this child and this family. So they may be protective factors. Remember, we don't have an investigative role, so we're not going out there to audit families and audit the child's network. This is information that you have available to you. The fourth section of Unicini starts with a summary of, of our previous involvement with the family of the child. So what's our role? And for some of us, we may be writing quite a bit in there because we have been involved with this child or family for a while. But for some people, this may be a relatively short section. Maybe I've had a one-off contact with the child and that's the extent of my involvement. The second part of section four involves consent. I'm going to talk about consent in a moment, but it is important to remember that good practice dictates that we should get the consent of the family, the parents, the child before making a referral, before sub submitting consent. But if this is a child protection issue and we cannot get consent because the law says the welfare of the child is paramount, we can share this information without consent. The final part of the Unicini referral form asks us to share information about other agencies or other organizations that may have an involvement with this child or this family. They may be organizations that social services or a police officer could go to for additional information or additional pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, but there may also be organizations who could be pulled into a plan of support for this child or family going forward. So this is the Unitini referral form. So we would use this form to share information with social services where we consider this to be a child who has needs, their basic needs are not being met, and we want from some help for this family or this child, or we consider this to be a child protection issue. We're sharing information with social services because we are worried that, that this child is in situations of risk. As part of that referral process, this information may go to the Health and Social Care Trust Gateway team. What gateway social workers expect of us? If this is a child protection referral, they expect, because of the urgency, for us to telephone Gateway and share our information over the phone and to follow that phone call up by filling in this Unicini form within 24 hours. So that's a child protection referral. Gateway are available for consultation directly if you are unsure of what to do or need advice about making a referral. And the phone numbers for all of the Health and Social Care Trust Gateway teams is at the end of this briefing. So if you're unsure or worried or you've never done this before, and maybe your designated officer isn't sure, lift the phone and consult with Gateway. In the case of a child in need, where you're making a family support referral, you should make that in writing using the Unicini form. So because of the lack of urgency, there's no requirement to ring up. 
you're putting in this in writing on the Unicini form. And we must record whether we have consent on the Unicini form. Like I said, getting consent for people who are referring to social services is considered to be good practice. But there may be situations where you cannot get consent and the welfare of the child is paramount. And in those situations, and child protection situations, you can use a Unicini without consent. If there are additional concerns during the process of submitting information to Unicini, then lift the phone and update Gateway. It is really important that you record all communications and contacts with social services. What you can expect from Gateway. You can consult with them prior to any referral. Now, it must be said Gateway teams are very busy teams and you may need to phone them a couple of times to get through. You can expect that Gateway will send you an acknowledgement of your referral. And again, if timescales slipped and you're worried that you haven't had an acknowledgement, contact Gateway and ask for that. You could expect that a social worker may contact you during the assessment process. So if a social worker, as a result of the information you share or other information they have, launch an investigation, they may come back to you for more information or to tell you on the, pro the process of investigation. And they will send you a letter to advise on the outcome of assessment. They may not give you much information in that letter because we need to remember that the family and the child has the right to privacy. And if you're not part of the professional interest group working closely with social services, they may not give you a great deal of detail in that letter. We often expect that we should get a lot of information back, but we've got to remember that social services and social workers within social services are not just accountable to us, they are also responsible for the information they have and they are accountable to families for the privacy of that information. If you're working for an organisation, you would count as a professional referrer. You're providing information to social services on behalf of your organisation. Under those circumstances, you cannot remain anonymous. And you've got to remember that your information may be available to the child and the family if they ask for it. So information you provide to social services may be shared with the family. In terms of consent, as I've said, gaining consent is good practice and it is an important part of the Unicini process. We have to remember that the information we gather on the people we work with is held by us, but it's owned by them. And if we're sharing information, ideally it should be with their consent. A good practice would dictate that if you are providing a service for someone, you have explained to them what information you will be gathering, how you will use it, how you will manage it, and under what circumstances you will share it and to who you will share it. So hopefully it should not come as a surprise to them that if you're sharing information with social services, it's with their consent. So when using Unicini, it's best practice to seek this consent, to seek the agreement of children and families. And consent is mandatory if you're making a family support referral. So you're asking for help for this family where you consider a child to be in need. Consent is mandatory for those referrals. It's not mandatory for child protection referrals, but it would be good practice. There may be exceptions to gaining consent. For example, if it places a child or others at increased risk of harm, so I have a concern that a child is being hurt. I want to share information with social services. If I go to the family seeking consent, it may add risk to that child. So my judgment would be not to get consent. Or we may be exempt from getting consent if it would, if it would undermine the detection of a crime, the prevention of a crime or the prosecution of a crime. So for example, someone could hide evidence or destroy evidence or it could lead to interference in an investigation. Under those circumstances, consent may be detrimental to the welfare of the child or the prosecution of a crime. If you cannot get consent, and remember getting consent is good practice and advised in most situations, if you cannot get consent, you need to share with social services on the Unicini form that you have been unable to get consent and this, the reasons for it. So when referring information to social services, Using the Unicini system, think about the name and the details of the child and young person. And as we've seen, there is a clear section on the Unicini form for that information. The nature of your concerns. Is it an allegation? Consider the timing, the source of your information, the location, etc. How and why the concerns have arisen. Has this been developing over time? Is it to do with parental capacity? Is it to do with things in the environment? 
are these concerns involving allegations of abuse or neglect? Now, it's important to remember that within the voluntary and community sector, it is not our job to diagnose abuse or to make decisions that abuse has happened. So within the Unicini form, it is advisable not to say to social services, this is physical abuse, this is neglect. We're providing them with information to help them investigate and come to that decision. We don't want to preempt that decision by putting it in the Unicini form. What I could do is write in the Unicini form that someone else has told me it was physical abuse, but it won't be me doing that. But what I will say is those things that cause me concern that lead me to think that physical abuse has happened. But I can record allegations of abuse. The child has told me, the parent has told me, for example. I need to think about whether I label to social services there is a need for urgent action. I should think about the person the referrer believes poses a risk to the child or young person. So who do I nominate in this Unitini form as the person who may be posing a risk to this young person and the reasons why I think they pose a risk? I need to think about who has parental responsibility for the young person. That'll be the person I'll be seeking consent from. I need to be thinking about, do I have information about the child or young person's views? The voice of the child is really important. And we may be best placed to get the voice of the child because of the skills we have or the relationship we have with the young person. So share their opinions, share their voice, share their disclosures within the Unitini form. I will also think about what the family or the young person's needs appear to be. So I have concerns about poverty. I have concerns about homelessness. I have concerns about substance use. All of those things appear to me to be needs and I will put those in the Unitini form. And I will think about all of those relevant people involved in the family, all of those people who are part of the family and child system who may be a risk, who may affect the child's needs, positively or negatively, they can go into the Unitini form. Other services involved with the family, other people who are or organizations who are part of the network, and whether the family or the parents or the child are aware of the referral. And as we've talked about, getting their consent is really important and whether they have agreed to the referral or not. And my contact details, so social services can come back to me, and my role and my relationship to the child. Those are all important pieces of content that will go into the Unigini form. So some tips on filling in your Unigini referral form. For more information on Unicini, you can go to that website. And for more information on the safeguarding process and policies and procedures within Northern Ireland, you can get them on the Safeguarding Board website. There are lots of contacts included on this slide, including the Trust Gateway teams, the Regional Emergency Social Work Service, the Police Service, and voluntary organisations, including Parentline, Childline, and Family Support NI, that you may find useful. And click CEOP. CEOP is the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Team, and they are particularly concerned with online child abuse. So these resources are available for you for consultation. And in terms of the gateway teams, those are the people who will be coordinating child protection and child in need inquiries, and the people who will be taking the pieces of the jigsaw you have and using them hopefully to best effect. I hope you got a lot out of this briefing. For more information on what CINE does, check out our website. And we have an ongoing range of training available for social workers, social care workers, child care workers and youth workers within the voluntary and community sector. Check out our website for more details. Thank you.